The primary mirror of Hubble had been incorrectly ground by one fiftieth the width of a human hair. This small error was enough to cripple the two billion dollar telescope. How could the science fail? How could there be a flaw? And what is it there about our system that doesn't identify the flaws until way, way, way late in the game? Like many, it was one of the dark days of, uh, of my life. It was horrible. You know, I was new. I'd only spent at that point, what, maybe five years of my life um, doing that. Many people at that point had spent over a decade of their lives. And here, it just wasn't going to let us do the sorts of things that we had always hoped to do. It was really a, a, a stain on the honor of the, the astronomy community and of NASA to have launched this very expensive telescope and to have this most fundamental of error, spherical aberration in it. The mirror is a beautiful mirror. It's got a lovely shape. It's wonderfully smooth. It's just the wrong shape. But because it's such a beautiful mirror, it was possible to build instruments that would use that wrong shape and still make good images. With Hubble on its way, the astronomers wait for the first images from the telescope. Their day of reckoning has arrived. All of us were, were packed into this uh, not terribly spacious room around maybe one or two computer terminals watching as everything came in. It was an incredibly intense time. What was at stake was, for the most part, the credibility of the program. It was quite a head rush, to be honest. And I think when I look back on my career, I doubt that there will be another high to compare with being one of the people to stand there in front of all of our colleagues and say, this time we got it right. This is a Hubble picture of a galaxy before the repairs. This is the same galaxy after the repairs. Hubble was back, ready to turn its full arsenal of cameras on the stars. The Crab Nebula, located in our Milky Way galaxy, harbors the tattered remains of a huge star explosion, first witnessed by Chinese astronomers in the year 1054. Before Hubble put the crab under its lens, astronomers never expected this dead star to be so lively. The crab is just this wonderful, neat astrophysics experiment all in one package. There's something there almost for everyone. For example, this material that was blasted into space, all of the elements that were formed as a result of nuclear processes inside that star are contained in those filaments of ejecta. It's where the atoms that you and I came from, events like that. At the heart of the crab is a violent piece of astrophysical machinery, a pulsar. This is a collapsed star six miles across, but it weighs as much as our sun and emits the energy of 130,000 suns. The Hubble Space Telescope has photographed the crab over time and produced extraordinary images. The first space movie showing wispy waves pushing out from the center of the Crab Nebula. So the net result was that the Crab Nebula is certainly dynamic, but probably much more dynamic than any of us probably thought it was. These space waves move away from the pulsar at 90,000 miles per second. Hubble shows the Crab may be a model in miniature for what happens on a huge scale at the center of galaxies with active energy sources at their cores. The Crab Nebula really illustrates what Space Telescope is all about. It's giving us that kind of a new, fresh look at phenomena throughout the universe. The landscape of the frontier, part of our collective dreams of Western movies and unknown territories, Curiously, these ghostly desert spires look like miniature replicas of the Eagle Nebula, an area which Hubble has shown to be anything but barren. 7,000 light years away from us, the Eagle is in fact a star hatchery, a nesting ground where prenatal stars are incubated. Astronomers Paul Scohan and Jeff Hester pointed Hubble at an area of the sky routinely photographed by ground-based telescopes and saw a picture of striking depth and clarity. Just looking at this gorgeous picture and realizing that it's not out of an artist's conception, but it's something that's real 
and it's out there, uh, has an impact on people. Probably the stranger reactions that we got had to do with people looking at them and seeing pictures. You know, when we're kids, you look up in the sky and you look at the clouds and you pick pictures out of them. And in fact, when I took it home and showed it to my kids, they immediately, there's a sleeping cat in there and there's a dog with its paws up on a fence post and there are just all sorts of neat pictures in there. But then looking at it a little bit more closely, uh, fairly quickly we realized that there was a, a discovery in there as well. Because you actually, you've got the visible star in there sitting right at the head. The tall columns in the picture, often called elephant trunks, harbor newly forming stars, partially hidden in the small nodules. Each embryonic star is surrounded by a protective egg of gas and dust, about 11 billion miles across, the size of our entire solar system. These eggs feed the growing star until it has gained enough weight to trigger a thermonuclear reaction required for star birth. But not all these stars will hatch. Each one of those little eggs were being uncovered, and in the process, the stars that were forming inside of it are being cut off from the material that they're forming from. And we seem to have discovered a process that people hadn't really seen before. Uh, you go out to Monument Valley and you see these spires, and there are some similarities. The structures that you see in Monument Valley form because there's some sort of a capstone. This hard piece of rock protects the stuff underneath it. And in part, that's what we're looking at in the Eagle Nebula. At the top of each one of these, there are these regions where the gas is denser. These globules remain behind and protect the stuff behind them. When we look at the processes that we're studying, processes of star formation, processes of elements being formed and ejected back into space, the elements that we're made out of, it's looking at our roots taken to the extreme. I think that there are few things that are more significant in our time than missions like the Space Telescope.